In this video, I'm going to be talking about kitchen island size guidelines. Now, these are some important dimensions and measurements to know if you're considering designing an island in your new kitchen. Hi, I'm Michael from Kitchen Cider and welcome to the channel. Having a kitchen island is probably one of the most desired features in a kitchen. And while they can be extremely practical and look fantastic, there are a few size guidelines to be aware of when designing one. Having an island isn't always possible and installing one just for the sake of it can actually make your kitchen harder to use on a day-to-day -day basis. So if you're considering having an island, the following guidelines are a helpful way to work out if one will fit in your space. How much space do you need between an island and a counter? So I always like to plan at least one to 1.2 meters of space between the island and a counter or the island and a wall, any walkway that there is in the kitchen. This distance means that you're able to walk around the island freely and there's enough space for two people to be stood sort of back to back or walk past each other. If somebody say stood working at the hob or stood doing the dishes at the sink. And it also means that you're able to open your doors and drawers and things like that without clashing and taking up too much space. And if the space for your kitchen already exists, I really recommend getting some cardboard boxes out or marking some tape on the floor for the size of the island that you think you want and just living with it for a little bit and walking around it to make sure that you have enough space to comfortably operate in the kitchen. On the other hand, there is such a thing as too much space and I would say really anything over sort of 1.5, 1.6 meters is a little bit too big and you're gonna be taking that extra step every time to get to the island and move from workstations. The island can sort of float away. How much overhang should the kitchen island have for seating? Many of us envision the island as a social hub for the kitchen with space for cooking as well as seating and adding an overhang to the countertop is a great way to get that seating. So in my opinion, the minimum overhang you need to comfortably sort of get in and get your knees tucked under at the island is 20 centimeters. Now that's the minimum I would say. However, I always aim to go for 25 centimeters. That's usually my standard. And typically the maximum unsupported overhang you can have for seating is 30 centimeters. Anything deeper than that and you're likely going to need an L bracket or legs to support that overhang. However, the type of countertop material that you choose and the thickness will also determine what this overhang limit is. So as a quick guide, typically if your countertop is really thin and 12 millimeters thick, you're looking at a 20 centimeter overhang limit. If it's 20 mil thick, a little bit more contemporary, you're looking at that 25 centimeter limit. And if it's 30 mil thick, you're looking at the 30 centimeter overhang limit. Now there may be some slight variations to these rules depending on the type of material that you go for with your countertop. So I always recommend double checking with your countertop manufacturer but these are some good guidelines, some good rules. How much space do you need per person for seating at a kitchen island? So a good general rule that I like to go by is to allow 60 centimetres per person. This allows for enough elbow room to sit comfortably and not feel like you're sat on top of the person next to you. If space is at a premium, you could bring this down a little bit to around 50 centimetres. And this is especially good if the island's going to be used primarily by kids rather than adults. How big is too big for a kitchen island? So having a great big kitchen island can be fantastic, but there is such a thing as having an island that's too big. Now the room will typically dictate the size of the island. As I spoke about before, you've got that one to 1.2 meter walkway around the island. However, there is another thing to keep in mind, and this is the size that the countertop material is available in. So most stone countertops, such as granite, marble, quartz, or a sintered stone like Decton, they all come in slabs. And these slabs are approximately three meters by 1.4 meters. So to be safe, don't plan a kitchen island that's any bigger than three meters without first checking with the countertop manufacturer that there are slabs or is available in a bigger size. If the countertop isn't available in that bigger size, you're likely going to have to need joint lines and this can really ruin the look of a kitchen island. Now, if you do want a bigger island, but you don't want those joint lines, you could consider having two countertop materials. A popular option here is having a stone countertop as your main section and then a timber section for the breakfast bar or seating area. Or you could consider using an acrylic countertop. A popular brand one is Corian. Now Corian does come in slabs and when it's installed, it will be in sections. 
but where they meet these sections, they'll get filled and buffed out. So these joint lines become completely invisible, meaning that it looks like just one huge slab. How much space do you need for a kitchen island? Now I've talked about this a little bit in a previous video, which I'll leave a link to, but I think it's worthwhile going over it again here. So if we take a standard depth kitchen cabinet, of 650 millimeters off of the wall, then add our one meter walkway. Then if we have an island that's say 1.2 meters deep, now this could be two standard 60 centimeter or 600 millimeter cabinets back to back, or a 60 centimeter cabinet and a shallow depth 30 centimeter cabinet with a 30 centimeter overhang. Whatever combination of cabinets we like to make up that 1.2 meter deep island. And then we allow for another one meter walkway after the island before the wall. If we add up all of these dimensions, it gives us 3.85 meters. Now this is the depth, the overall depth that the room needs to be to accommodate that 1.2 meter deep island comfortably. Or say if you had a kitchen with two runs of cabinets on either wall with the same island in the middle, using the same measurements, the room depth would have to be 4.5 meters overall. Now these measurements are based on an island that's 1.2 meters deep, as I mentioned. So the overall measurements will vary slightly if your island's deeper or shallower. You just adjust these to suit. What can you do if you don't have room for a kitchen island? Unfortunately, not all of us will have enough space for a kitchen island, but that doesn't mean you can't create a social seating area or some extra deep worktop for prep. A really great alternative is to create a peninsula. You can design some seating on the outside of the peninsula to create that social area, as well as creating that extra deep worktop, which is really handy for prep work. The benefit of having a peninsula is that you don't need that extra space and clearance on the fourth side, like you would with a kitchen island. And this means that you can often design a peninsula in smaller spaces while still achieving the benefits of a kitchen island. Kitchen islands are great, but peninsulas are too. So don't be disappointed if you can't fit a kitchen island in your space. Having a peninsula could be a really great alternative. Having a kitchen island can be the dream for many, but it's not always the right choice depending on how much space you have in the room. But by using the size guidelines that I've outlined, it will ensure that you create the perfect sized island for your room. Now you just need to decide if you're going to have your hob, sink, or nothing at all on your kitchen island. But I think I'll save that chat for another video. All that's left to say is thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.